I'm just saying it's sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hey everybody, welcome to I'm Just Saying episode 88. I am Andrew Zarin. We took a couple of weeks off. A lot was going on here at the network. I know Lon uh, was busy one week and then I got caught up with a couple of meetings, but we are here uh, to do a show. We're real. We are. Uh, in the meantime, Lon, while, yeah. while this was happening, I have realized I have a gluten allergy. You do? I do. And I've always... Do you see this? Yeah. I did a test last night. So a couple rubbed, weeks ago... You rubbed gr- bread on your head? I rubbed oil and bread all over me and, and hoped that I would break out. Is this on YouTube? Uh, it is, actually. There it should go. be. So I we've spoken about this, I think, a couple times, like mm-hmm. food allergies. And yeah. I think Joanna said that m- many people have food allergies and they have no idea that they have food allergies. Right. They just go on their entire lives and, and eat, eating all the stuff that they're allergic to and then they feel like crap. So a couple weeks... I think like a week and a half, I really cut down on carbs and like all the gluten intake. Like I really cut down on it. I just right. wasn't really eating as much bread and pasta and rice. Yep. The ri- rice is rice is all right. No, rice yeah. is fine. But I wasn't eating like things with gluten in them. Right. Jess and I, and I felt great. I, I mean, I had like three weeks. I felt I had so much energy. I felt excellent. Jess and I ordered a pie and I said to her, I'm like, you know what? I've been feeling really good. I haven't really been eating too many carbs. Uh, and I think I have a gluten allergy because I feel really different. And she's like, you know what? Let's try that. Have pizza and see what happens. I had pizza. I Get broke- sick for me. She, she- Yeah, pretty much. Okay. There you go. I had the pizza. I felt like crap the next day and I, and I got a pimple on my face. Right. Weird. So that went by another week. I didn't eat it. I felt great. Last night, we ordered pizza. Again, same thing happened. Maybe you're just allergic to pizza. Maybe. I mean, what else could it be? No, no. That's the only thing I could think of is like a gluten allergy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Just, I'm, I don't know. If you eat and don't eat certain things and you just feel better, your dog is nuts. Yeah, this is what he does. He runs in circles? Yeah, he just uh, runs like that. He's a lunatic. Maybe it's the gluten. It might be the gluten. It might be. You know, there's a lot of gluten in uh, dog food, too. Is that? Do yeah. dogs get a gluten allergy? Or? They can. They can. Yeah. Well, basically, I think the reason that people are having such a bad reaction to gluten stuff is uh, the gluten is because that the wheat products in general just aren't the same as they were 50 years ago. Yeah. The, the wheat that you're eating now, uh, there's a book called Wheat Belly. I should lend it to you. Uh, uh, you could look it up. But, the, you know, basically the concept is, is that it's not just gluten. It's that the wheat itself is so altered from what its original state was yeah, yeah. that it's like your body doesn't know what to do with it. And it becomes gum, you know, basically in your system. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've seen me. I've just, I've kind of, I've not cut it out completely because I don't think I'm allergic to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, but, but it can impact your body and hold weight on you. And I'm wearing, I'm wearing... Thirty-five inch waist pants and and they're loose. Is that is that the? I you know the belly is that fat the lowest falls you've away. been you've been or in no? a long time. Yeah. yeah, I think I can get down to. I'm I'm definitely getting down to a thirty-four. By the time the bike trip is around, mm-hmm. I'll be I'll be down to a thirty-four. But uh, I would love to get down to a thirty-two inch waist. I think I can do that. About a thirty-one, thirty-two. You know, but for a guy my size, yeah. thirty-one. Th- now I'm getting the nice like inverted triangle cut. Now yeah. I'm getting like sized up and everything. It's very Have you cool. uh, been in the city? Have you seen the? Uh, it's almost complete. I mean the the tower. The tower. Yeah. Yeah. Today it became the tallest building in the country. Why they put that thing on top? Uh, no, no. It's um. Well, the t- excuse me. The tallest building in New York. In New York, they put the little needle up top, but it's cheating. Yeah. It's not really the tallest. Uh yeah the the uh the former uh Sears Tower now the the Wiggly Building or what the, is the Sears Tower now? It's called something else yeah. because it can have the. I just I don't know. I'm sorry. If you're the Sears Tower, you're you always, get to be the Sears well Pan Tower Am for, Building. Yeah. Right? Well, I love that they do that in New York that they rename the bridges. Like, do, do you know the Triborough the real the 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 given name of the Triborough Bridge now? 
Uh, JFK, uh, Robert Kennedy, the, the right? Robert Kennedy Bridge. Okay, the, okay, the, the, the most confusing bridge in New York <laughs> is the has fi- to be the, the 59th, 59th Street, Street Bridge. Ed Koch. 59th Street, Queensboro, oh, Ed, Ed Koch, Koch Bridge. Bridge. Jesus. It's like it's been married three times. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, that has to be confusing to people that are outside of, of even the area. You know, like, yeah, let's say you're going from the island. They're like, oh, well, what well, should I classic, do? Well, the classic one is when people go, Excuse me, I'm looking for 3421 Avenue of the Americas. It's like, you mean 6th Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if you're a New Yorker, it's 6th Avenue. No one calls it Avenue in the Americas. They did that back in the, the, the 50s, I think. Yeah. For the, you know, in, in honor of the League of Nations or something, some such thing. And, and it's still listed the Avenue of the Americas. There's not a sign that says 6th Avenue, but everyone calls it 6th Avenue. I'll tell you, though, this, this building is really nice looking. It took him twelve years. The new tower. Yeah, it yeah, took him twelve years to do it. But well, it's it's scheduled to open in twenty fourteen, isn't it? At this point, I think. Uh, when do they say no? Like another year, right? What year? Twenty fourteen is not that far away. Are you, are you kidding me? The the goal is twenty fourteen. I think to open, you know, and and function. Is so it's going to take thirteen years to to build the building. Well, when did they? They didn't start building it like the moment they cleared the. The, the debris. No, it went through a lot of BS. Yeah. So, I mean, and then they got like, like they got the foundation poured and, or, you know, however you put that in a building that big. I don't know if it's, it's actually like, you know, a basement. Um, the, Cause it has like mega basements. I don't know how deep it goes, but um, yeah, it went through a lot of politic and then rebidding and that sort of thing. So it was, uh, well, do you remember when the, the twin towers were built? Do you do you know anything about that, or you were not in New York at that point? No, because th- they were just finished like a couple of years before I came down for college. Didn't they? They did they open in like seventy four or something? But it didn't take them too long to make it. I mean, you're not talking like ten years to to make. No, this no, thing. no. But I think you know them building it was not the the issue that it was now. I mean, now it's got to look right, be right. You know, it's got to be designed to 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 meet a concept. It's um, you know also you know. The, there weren't two buildings there before that someone blew up. Yeah, you know, so there's a you know, there, there was a lot of like you know how to go about it, not even what to do. They started in '68. They yeah, World Trade Center one '68, World Trade Center two '69. That's the start. That's the start. Completion 1970. Two years. Wow. It took them two years to build the World Trade Center. Have it's you- taken them. Who knows? Have you seen the, uh, the, the? There's a time lapse of this tower, but have you seen the time lapse there on YouTube? There's a time lapse of a 30 story story building built in 30 days in China. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, yeah. and and first of all, they're using thousands of labor uh, laborers, and they're using really cheap labor, and they don't have to go through fire codes and uh, half the half the fire marshals that 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 we have to have inspect the building. Yeah. You know how difficult it is to open up a building like this? Like, it has to be extremely difficult. That also probably has a lot to do with it. In 1968, they didn't have all the building laws and zoning laws that we do now. Oh, absolutely. But you know what's interesting? Like, you look at the Twin Towers now, and it looks dated. It's starting to look dated to me when I look at it. Yeah, it's like looking at a, a good picture of Manhattan in the 40s. There's a picture of the downtown that's taken like in the 1940s, and it just looks like they might as well be caves. I know. You know, it's it's that it's that. It's odd. so different. I mean, it's become so... I've been going to the city a lot more. Yeah. And ju- it, it's, it's a whole thing. I mean, really, like to live there, you have to live this hectic lifestyle all day and all night. And when you get home, it doesn't stop because you hear everything from outside. Oh, yeah. I, I lived one summer in Manhattan. I said it was like sleeping at 85 miles an hour. It was just so hectic. And so and yet there are people that like adore it. Uh, very honestly, Joe and I considering retiring and living in Manhattan. Yeah. Like if we yeah. if we at the end, we, you know, in the last 10 years of our lives, we would just get a really cool like, you know, basement apartment and, and live there because we loved the town, you know. None of us are going to drive anymore. Then again, you know, one of our big retirement <laughs> retirement plans is because we own a house in the, you know one of the highest real estate markets in the country, to yeah. sell the house and just buy something, you know, smaller somewhere else for ten, t- you know, buy something smaller for one tenth of the price of of what we own here in New York. 
with 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 lower property. Where would tax. you go? Where where would you go in the country if you would move? Um, we have either said this is going to sound really bizarre, either Vermont or South Carolina. I neither one of us hate winter, you know what I mean. But you know we're also saying you know if we were old, you know I don't know if I'm going to be you know either shoveling or pulling out the 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 snowblower. Yeah, you know I could get the nice college boys or you know the nice kids from town to plow me out, but that's not a guarantee. So I'm thinking you know maybe we'll split it. Maybe we'll split it somehow. Like stay here half the year and then go there half the year. Yeah. Yeah, I could never. I always think about like I fantasize about leaving New York and going to like the West Coast. When I find myself not going out anymore, I, then I'll start to consider it. You know what I mean? But yeah. I mean, I go out a lot. You know me. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. Well, you're in the city all the time, right? Yeah, all the time. Have you always been like? Have you always gone in? Uh, well, when Joe was sick, now. But like the moment like that turned around, we just <laughs> we said we live in Manhattan, we sleep in Queens. That's yeah. that's what it meant at first for us. Like uh, tomorrow, we're going out to dinner with friends. Wednesday night, Joe has acting class, and I have something to do in the city. Thursday night is um, we're having a, a, an anniversary party for the first year of the the boot camp. Um, not mine, but um, uh, the other one. It's their one year anniversary. And then uh, Saturday, I'm going to Cinco de Mayo party. And oh wait a minute, Cinco de Mayo not uh, Cinco de Mayo party by day, uh, by night, by day. I'm doing a bar crawl for the uh, for the AIDS ride. Uh, there's a guy, a rider in New, in um, Williamsburg, a guy from Williamsburg who's going to be doing the ride in California. I'm just, I'm just amazed that people like Brooklyn is cool now, but Queens is still like you tell someone from the city you're from Queens, they, they look at you like like you have ten heads. Oh, listen, when you were when you don't you were you weren't even young enough. There used to be the like I would never date a seven one eight, you know, people two one twos and seven one eights like. That was like the Why? worst thing because because you were from like the outer boroughs. Yeah, it was really bad at one point. Yeah, we we have less now. Crime now than people you. can't just people can't just can't live in Manhattan. You know, I mean, unless I, there's four to a room. I, I went into the city the other day and it took me twenty minutes. I mean, literally, it was twenty one minutes the entire ride to get in by car. But no, no, no. Tra- I took I took the LA double R. Yeah, the Long Island Railroad is amazing. I mean, that's that's it's you're just the like, great. It's really the greatest thing ever made, and I have to tell you why. Because first of all, it's well, not the, the subway. Line, the line we're on too yeah. is great. There's no stops. I mean, yeah. it, it's just perfect. It's always it, good when you don't have to stop in Jamaica. Oh my God, yeah, because most people have to do that. Oh, that's what I ended up doing today when yeah. I when I called you and asked for your help. I ended up no no. This is what I I ended up taking the Oyster Bay line, but only like four stops to Greenvale, and then I I was at the corner of. Uh, uh, Glen Cove Road in Northern Boulevard, mm-hmm. you know, over there by that shop, little shopping center. And I took a bus. <laughs> and 21? Like the last time, the, the N20. The N20. N20. And that stops at every other So you took your line. car to Glen Cove. Yeah. That's well, where my, my old business was. That's my guy. On Glen thing. Street. That's where I was. Where, that's where, 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 where on Glen Street? 191. I was uh, two, 266. Oh. So I was right, you were right before the train tracks. Any of you up there in Glen Cove, Jay's a really great mechanic. Does, I does, hate that place. He's been he's done well by me. I hope Glen Cove catches on fire and and just burns because there's no no way to the highway. That's the worst part about Glen Cove. Well, there's the no whole north, way. the whole North Shore. Yeah, there's no Once access. Everything everything above northern uh, more than Boulevard is just hinterland. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why it's like that. Though. I don't know. I, I, I'm it's amazed. Like if you brought someone here from Kansas and you showed them these places, you'd be like, "This is hinterland." They would yeah. think this was a metropolis. Yeah, it's it's a it's a long long road off the highway. It's a tough gig. So you went there by bus. Yeah, came home by bus. Y- you came home by bus. Luckily, Jay lives near me, my mechanic. So he's picking me up in the morning and just taking me to go work with yet. him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm looking here. Um, are you excited for the playoffs? You know, the Knicks and the Rangers are both in the playoffs. Well, like in the and same. It's very day. exciting. It's like 94 all over again for many people. Yeah, I, I heard this. Um, well, you know me. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> no, listen. Um, it's so funny. It's not that I don't like sports. It's that I, I really hate sports hoopla. Uh, you know, I, I would rather watch a bunch of guys play. Like, ra- first of all, I'd rather be there. I'd rather play. And if I can't play, I'd like to watch it there. You know? And I, I just hate people who say, you know this about me. The people that say, you know, that do the whole, you know, paint their face, wear number one kind of thing. It's just, 
It's not me. It's yeah. it's it's just not. How about who the I jerseys? Am. Are you? What do you think of the, like the people who wear the jerseys? And they're not going to a game. Um, listen, you know, I can't take this away. This is, you know, I think teamwork is really important. I think, you know, that's a team mentality can be very productive. It can also be very destructive. You know, hey, let's gang rape someone because <laughs> we're a group. Um, and I'm not saying that that's what it turns into. It's just that I've always been, I would have been the worst soldier in the world. Why is that? Because, you know, it was like, get up. I would have been like, why? <laughs> you know, that just would have been me. And not to be a wise ass, it was like, why? What's up? What are we doing? Let's talk about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we want to take this hill. Well, what are our options? <laughs> You're going to do it the way I tell you to do. This is the only plan. You know, I, that, would, that would be me. On Saturday, I went, I was at press. No, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, am I drunk at this point? I mean, I've become one of those, right? Where you like, you, you don't have to call me. You know, I'm at the bar. I become one of those people. Yeah, it's like it's like I need to find Andrew. Oh, he's at press. Oh, what day? Saturday. He's at press. press. So I get there around eleven, and I find Joanna judges. I know she does. Oh yeah, horribly, horribly. <laughs> I get there around eleven. Imagine 15. being married to her. I'll yeah. tell you this: is my entire Saturday morning. I wake up at around six. Do you have breakfast? Uh, yeah, I have my coffee. I have something to eat. No gluten anymore. You know what? Sometimes I don't have breakfast. Sometimes I just drink my coffee, go to the bar and drink. There you go. So I'll have my coffee six o'clock. I'll read. I'll, I'll get some work done. I'll take my shower around eight, nine. I'll, you know, start doing some work in the house. And then 1030 comes. I start preparing for my day <laughs> and my day, is which going means to- going to the bar and drinking till about four o'clock in the afternoon, stumbling home, taking a nap till nine, waking up and then drinking some more. Well, it's nice that you have a plan, you know. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, I, I've, and this is what I do every Saturday now. And Jess is so annoyed by the fact that I have a drinking day. What, uh, what is annoyed because she doesn't? Yeah, annoyed because she doesn't. <laughs> because I don't really Is drink. she off doing the, the, the princess? Yeah, stuff? yeah. Oh. So she's off doing that. And then she sees me like tweeting, drunk tweeting, that I want to stab someone in the face. <laughs> And she knows in I'm, the I'm neck. I always want to know, like, why people want to do stuff in the neck. You know, um, I want to punch him in the neck. Where did that come from? Because I've never, like, went, well, if nice I'm going to punch someone, I want to punch him in the neck. I want to punch him, like, in the face. No, so I go to the bar, and I hang out there, and they all know me. And they walk in, like, hey, Andrew, how are you? And then they already have my drink. I get my Pinot Grigio. I start off with Pinot Grigios. That's my first drink. They know I have a Pinot Grigio. I have my Pinot. I'm okay. I'm in a good spot. Well, anything, then I have a shot anything, of Jameson. I, okay, anything different from that would be, just be garish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have my uh, my shot of Jameson, and then I drink my beer. You know what's hysterical? You drink more in one afternoon than I drink like in three months. Yeah. That, that no, be... no. Maybe half a year. Okay. So if, can you... Well, do you know what the last time I had a drink? The last time I had a drink. Hold on. I can't remember the last time I had a drink. We had a party in, in January, okay? And I think I had, oh, um, I went to a place yeah, called- Yeah, you drank in January. Cafe Mogador, like in February, and I had a cocktail. Okay. That's the last time I drank. And then I started training for the ride, and therefore, I stopped drinking. The next time I drink will be um, June 9th, at the Santa Monica Pier at the uh, Mexican restaurant at the end of the pier where I and several friends will... Um, when you're done with the ride. Yeah, when I'm done with the okay. ride, we'll imbibe uh, much uh, pictures of uh, margarita. Well, that's not bad. I mean, but but see... But you know what will be thing. the next time I drink after that will be? The, the my pa- party. party. Two, my yeah. party two weeks later. And the next time I'll drink after that is... It's really a celebration. It's like... It's like, oh God, I'm going to be garish here. It's like masturbation. Yeah, you can do it, but you know, uh, you know, I want someone there with me when I'm doing it, <laughs> and then it doesn't turn into masturbation I had, anymore. It's become to the point, that, and now I think people are starting to realize that I may have a drinking problem. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I want to know the people who. Let went, me tell you something. Hmm, does he? I had. Do you remember Mac Greco? Yeah. From high, from middle school. Yeah. He walked into the bar, and he's like, "Hey, Andrew." He's like, uh, I'm, "He's like." It's Saturday. And by the way, I haven't seen him for a long time. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, I was loaded already. I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, dude, you're here every Saturday. Everybody knows. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's on your Facebook. 
We all know it's become a joke you know, you amongst have, people. You should you should have a Facebook page for Saturday at Press. Saturday at Press. And just me taking pictures of cocktails. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, today I'll be indulging in a Tom Collins. I have a picture of a glass of water at Press. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I, honest to God, I do. No, I sit there at the bar and, and, and I this is my entire process there. And it's so controlled. And this is why I like it. I, I'm in such a controlled environment. You know what we should do? I just thought of this. We should get one of those big giant like water bottles from a cooler mm -hmm. and put a thing for the ride and just you and I sit at the bar one day and just have people like drop, you know, quarters and dimes. I'm sure they would do that. Yeah. I'm sure they'd do that. You know what? Talk about to him this weekend. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Cuz I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the last things for the ride. I keep talking about the ride. <laughs> keep going. I'm sorry. So Saturday, so so do you do you um, ever have anything to eat? Yeah, no, no, no. I eat too. Oh, you do eat. Yeah, okay. I, I have my chicken fingers as an appetizer. At, at, at the, what time does that? So I start drinking. Let's say if it's eleven thirty, right? Like give or take. Is there anyone else drinking? Oh no, I'm the only guy. I'm the only one there. Like around twelve, like some people come in. There's a couple other regulars too that I know will come in at like. 12 30 they'll walk in for drinks for, and they'll have a drink at yeah. the bar they'll have a drink and like a sandwich but i'll start at like 11 30 like they're cleaning and i'm like i sit at the bar and they just take out the, the pinot grigio but the reason why i like it is because it's so controlled there like i they i don't even have to talk to them i sit there i have my phone and then i have people come like at 12 but i like i like to get a head start i so want to april fool you next year by by having them tell you like I, you know, it's just not working. It's We're not closing. Working. Yeah. We're closing. Oh, no, it's over. <laughs> uh, you know, I think about that now because I'm so connected to the place. I always think about that and it would devastate me. Listen, the, the, the Indian restaurant, now now when, I, when I'm not in, they, you know, the next time I come in, they're like, everything okay? Because I eat there so much. Yeah. No, but I go there uh, 1130. Uh, I have my first Pinot Grigio. I wait and then I stop drinking. And here's the thing. I'll stop drinking for like a good hour. And then I have my shot of Jameson. I'll have my beer. I'll the, order chicken. The, sh the, sh the shot of Jameson kickstarts the drinking. Kickstarts the drinking again. Yeah. Okay. In the in that hour, I'm catching when up you, for the hour. In the hour that you don't drink. Uh huh. You Twitter some. I Twitter. Mm -hmm. I Facebook. Do you watch? Uh, do you have your computer with you? No. Just no. just on your phone. Yeah. Um. Do you watch um any of the sports on the TV? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll okay. watch the TV. I'll talk to Dave. Yep. Uh, I talk to the owners. I talk to Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And then 12, 12, 15 people come by. Like, I've been going with more people now. And then yeah. we'll drink till about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then I walk home. And then I'm done. I'm you, finished. You walk. Wait, now, what path do you take home? Do you, do you walk along Bell or do you cut a block in? Uh, I, I cut across that street. I guess that's 40th. Right there. And I take 40th and I go up. For now, whatever do you I ever do an, Do you ever do an errand on the way home? No, never. No, I'll go tanning. I'll go tanning before uh, after, after after. It's very relaxing. Drunken tanning. I'm so loaded <laughs> that I guess because I I drank. You know, so if much, the tanning I'm, salon started serving alcohol, you would be like, you'd be your I'd perfect. I'd be there work. next. Yeah. <laughs> so I go tanning afterwards, and I walk home, and I'm really confused after I get out of the tanning bed between all the booze and now the heat. I become mm -hmm. really confused, and I just wobble, and it makes it even worse when I get home, and I just pass out. It's great. It's a wonderful day. And 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 does do you awake to just being home? No, I'll get up right before. And I'm sober by then. Really? And then I'll have like a beer one while I'm waiting. I listen, I don't drink during the week anymore. It's very rare for, to see me drinking. Oh, so you're concentrating it all on Saturday. All on Saturday. So I'll, I'll drink Friday. I'll have a drink maybe one night a week with a meal or just a drink. With a meal. And and then like I'm not really drinking. Before I was like pounding back six packs every night. Are you going to Erewhon as much anymore? We went a couple nights. Uh, last week we went. Okay. I'm just I'm just so comfortable there. That's why I go. And, and and that's how I've always been. If I'm comfortable someplace, I will constantly go there. If I'm I not, have, I can't I have, go. I have um I have I'm awaiting Bear Burger. That's my big await because I'm eating new 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 and enjoyable sources of protein. But here's the thing about Bear, and they have a gluten. So they have free bun. they have. Ostrich burgers, right? Yeah, yeah. Why would anybody get an ostrich burger? Um, Twenty bucks. Way low in fat, way high in protein. It's supposed to be really good. Is it good? Like, does it taste good? S supposedly, it tastes like just. It tastes very much like beef. But it's a bird. But it's a bird. 
Because I guess it's so big. So it should be chicken. But it doesn't taste more like beef. Just find it bizarre. Go in there, and I'm and I'm 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 really doing the red mango a lot. Yeah, because you know it's not healthy at all. Red mango. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, it's it's not all natural. They claim it's all natural, but yeah. if you look at like the ingredients that they use, yeah. there's like daiso claro hydrite, you know, and like y- coloring. It's not it's not as healthy. It's great. It's delicious. I love it, but it's not that great. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I, I want some red mango. I'm gonna ask Joss to go there. <laughs> I'm gonna see if she'll go there for me. Kind of like in the coconut. Get really good. Me <laughs> red mango. And we'll see. And. Do you, did she ever like, do you ever get stuff for her? Does she ever say, honey, get me this? And, and you I, do? you know what I do every week? I pick up a sandwich for her yeah. from press. So yeah. when she gets home, she has something to eat, mm-hmm. but I've left the sandwich there two weeks in a row <laughs> because I have been so loaded when I've left the bar. But do you, does she ever like text you and say, can you pick this up for me? How I don't, I don't drive. I don't go anywhere. Dude, yeah, but you don't even. Walk what am up I gonna get? I walk up the street and get stuff for Joanna. Oh no! Come on, what are, what, what are you I crazy? Walk over to the milk farm. What are we? What are we crazy? Walking up the block to go to the That's deli? That's crazy talk, Mister. Yeah, I try to keep myself in the house as much as I can, preferably to in this room. I want to keep myself in this room as much as I can. Yeah, you're gonna end up like like uh, Howard Hughes with the long toenails. Listen, watching I'm Ice fine Station with Zebra. that. As long as I could have things, you know. Right. This is what, so why do you need to live in New York? That's that that see, once you get really isolated, it won't matter where you are. Don't you think? I think you well, would be I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I like being a New Yorker because I could complain about being a New Yorker. Yeah. I could complain about how I hate going into the city every Wednesday because every Wednesday I'm in the city and every Wednesday I do my meetings in the city and I feel miserable and I feel filthy when I get back home. But I, I think I kind of like that. You, you, you kind of punish yourself. Well, there's something for you to feel city. immediately superior about, and no one complains about it. You know, like I've been. I took the subway a couple. I don't take the subway, and I took the subway, and I'm like, oh, I'm like one of the regular people now, taking the subway. I can't imagine you on the subway. Oh, it's very uncomfortable. It, you could spot me from a mile away. How uncomfortable I. I don't touch anything, and I don't sit anywhere. I totally have to like follow you down and tape you it's very uncomfortable very 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 uncomfortable so you're not excited at all about the uh playoffs um no i'm looking more forward to the olympics but we've talked about this before i kind of like individual pursuit i like this you know i constantly make the same reference the estonian hammer thrower guy you know wow it's 20 to 22 the knicks are behind by two points in the first quarter with uh, a minute 27 Feel left. free to update. I think, you know, I think sports is a beautiful thing. I think people do it really well. I just think we make, like, heroes out of, well, you know, I'm not. I'm even okay with them being sports heroes, but I wish they were also, like, you know, teaching heroes. And, you know, I chose my profession, but, you know, nursing heroes and stuff. That the, that people that do, I I think that everyone that does the things that they do extraordinarily well and it serves society, should get paid really well. Well, what's hysterical is that if if you look back, like if if you go on Twitter, the, a lot of these websites, like Gawker does this funny thing where they'll, let's say like Paul McCartney, right? People had no idea who Paul McCartney was. People have no idea. Kids had no idea the Titanic was a real thing and was not a movie. And I, I was amazed at the fact that they had no idea that the Titanic actually happened. Actually happened. Just, um... Just uh, the hundredth anniversary last week. Yeah, and that's years. why they kept saying, "Oh my God, the Titanic was real." I thought it was a movie. And you think about it, and let's say they're six, fifteen, sixteen years old. You're talking about a ten, twelve, thirteen, let's say fourteen year gap between me and them. Yeah. But I guess I mean, how could you not know these things? Right. And they'll grow up, and their kids won't know something really basic, and it'll be really stupid. I also think people, we've said this before, I think kids in this country get smarter slower. I don't think that they don't get smart. I don't think that they don't learn things. It's just that overall they know less because the more you know, the more you can know. The more facts you know, the more you seem to hold on to facts. If you know no facts, none stick to you. You know, you know, you mm-hmm. know. Well... You know, the jaywalking look at, stuff look at it just like makes this. me crazy. I mean, but look at it like this. We have the internet now, and the internet did not exist 20 years ago. It, I mean, it did, but not, not to the to the extent that it is now. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody used it. 
We have so much information. We're so connected, but yet we do not know simple things that we should. Yeah, like if 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 someone, you know, that's the next great terrorism, someone who shuts down the internet. People will be like, what do I do? But it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing how people, like people don't know who Stephen Hawking is. Yeah. Like people don't know who these people are. Do you know he, Pe- he, when he got out at a sex club? I saw that. Yeah, good for him. Like, like who's going to say no? Yeah. He can't. Like when Steve Jobs passed away, people are saying Who's he was real. He, he was real. He, Steve Jobs is real. I just thought like he people bo- did I not he was know. a bobblehead doll. I thought that was it. But I mean that that's a little bit. Uh, and I'm wondering, do I know that Steve Jobs is or was you know the founder of Apple because I'm involved in technology, or do I know? Because of popular culture. Because of pop culture. Like, why do I know who Steve Jobs is? But I always knew who Steve was. But but didn't it always seem to you that, I don't know, I have a group of friends and that I know stuff that they don't know and they know stuff that I don't know. And like what, because let of Let me that, ask you, what do you know that your friends don't know and what do your friends know that you don't know? Okay. Um, well, you know, you've known me an awful long time. I know a little bit about everything. That's my thing i like to know a little bit about so i th- i'd say that like i have i think that's why i have the group of friends that i have i have a, a whole little subset of science geek friends because i know some science geek stuff you know and i know a little bit about investment because i got a couple of friends whose main thrust is investment and then i have theater friends and they know theater and movies you know that sort of thing see i'm an information junkie and now i, I have love i now stuff. have friend and uh, now i have um workout friends which is really strange, but I do. And now I start to know, like you know, what to eat before a workout and what to eat after a workout, and that's, that's really yeah. But it, you know, like you try to have a discussion with someone. Like I had a discussion with uh, one of my hosts. It, it was after the show, but we were talking about World War II and we were talking about education in this country. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about you know, and it just it was a very naturally happening conversation. I think we were talking about a book about World War II, and then it led into Vietnam. And then I was thinking back, and I said, you know, in school. In this country, we are not taught about Vietnam. About Vietnam, because it wasn't in the curric- It's not in but, the textbooks. But n- no, but even but here's the thing. I mean, and I went to school. You know, let's say twenty years after the war. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what seventy seventy five is when it officially ended. Five seventy six. Okay, so they pulled out. Seventy five. So, it was done. It was done. Seventy one. When was when the war was over? Seventy five was when the last forces came out of vietnam that very famous shot of the helicopter leaving the uh the u.s embassy okay so i mean you're talking i I entered school the public the new york city public school system in 1988 so i was a kid but i mean i i grew up i remember when the gulf war happened we were talking about the gulf war but and then you talk about middle school and you kind of learn about these things so this is how history works in the new york city public school system and a lot at, of the country. And a lot of the... I don't know for any other part, but I'm assuming it's like this. So you learn about, let's say, history, right? Modern history. Mm-hmm. You start off with World War One. World War One happened. Why? They, nobody knows. Archduke Ferdinand was killed. But, but nobody ever says that. Nobody. It just, it, it just so happens that countries in Europe are fighting, mm-hmm. and here comes the Americans, and we shoot everyone, and, and, we then, win. and then we win, and then Germany can't have a military. That's what we learned. Then the twenties happened. The roaring, tw- the roaring twenties. We just we we buzz right through there. We learn a little about prohibition. Uh, women didn't want alcohol. That's what we learned about prohibition. Mm-hmm. And then we learn about nineteen twenty eight and the econ- twenty nine the economy stuck. collapsing. Yeah. We skip a couple years. We don't really learn much about the thirties. We learned that we didn't want to get into the, the war. Impression, the, the, you, you, it's really the depression that that they focus on in the thirties. But but they, but we don't learn that you know it none escalated. Of, none, of, none of the politics. No no nothing. Um, the uh, we learn about. Let's see. Um, I'm just trying to. I'm now. I'm trying to go back to what we learned, and then we jump to us going into the war. And we go into why do we go into the war? Because the French got their ass kicked, and the British are getting their ass kicked, and here comes the Americans again. And there's Normandy. We storm. We kill Hitler. We drop the bomb on Japan, and everything is great. Here are the 1950s, 1960s. We learn about hippies, and then history stops. Yeah, pretty and, much. And this is what happens: the history stops right after Woodstock, so 1969, 
And we jump ahead to 1980, Reagan coming into office. Yeah, pretty much. And the 70s have disappeared from the curriculum. Yeah. Nothing happened in the 1970s. Nothing. And we jump into 1980s, and then it, and it continues after there. Because the 70s were such a depressing decade overall. You know, so, uh, you know, talk, it was it was another me decade. Oh, 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 Kennedy was shot. We learned about that. But that's 63. Yeah, we learned about Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, the Kennedy wants you to forget about Carter's presidency, says uh, MC Phillips in the chat room. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's amazing to me. And the, this is the why. The bicentennial I mean, happened in this country about the worst time it could ever happen. The, 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 1976. 1976. Yeah. The, the apathy in this country. Like. No one celebrated. Can you imagine if, if like, sort of the Reagan attitude and the born in the USA attitude, if that had happened in 1976, this country would have been having, having itself. This would oh, have yeah. been the most jingoistic, you know, love fest ever. But 1976, it was like, we're 200 years old. And when people were like, yeah, so what? Yeah, you know what it's almost like like even even the teachers would do this. They would they would say like yeah, the 60s were just so cool and the 70s just were not. There's nothing yeah. to learn. Like the Vietnam War, we don't know. I think people were embarrassed. We are never by. taught about. I guess I guess that's what it is, but if you look at the curriculum, I mean, we're going back. Let's say I was in middle school in the 90s, early 90s. Mid mid 95. I always thought history should be taught literally by the year. By the year. By the year, and and that, and that, not chronologically. Like I think you you go into class and go today, we're doing 1967, you know, and say this thing has happened, and like you go, oh right, because of that other thing yeah. that happened. Like, well, it would be so much. It's... I think what blows my mind is when I start to see things being as old as I am now, which is really old, and seeing how crap that happened 400 years ago is still impacting world history, you know, because of something that someone did, you know, back then someone slighted someone else that there are entire groups of people just like, well, I, I single handedly blame Jimmy Carter for nine 11. And you know about this. I, I had, I wrote a paper on this really? on, on how Jimmy Carter was single handedly responsible for nine 11. And I, and I linked it to Jimmy Carter and how all these events happened. And leading up to Jimmy Carter. Well, see, what's what's so wild is that you can do that with just about anything. Just about anything, be, Because yeah. everything does lead to everything else. Else, you know, that's how things progress. Something happens because the thing before it happened. Someone brought something interesting up. What have you been taught about Watergate? Well, that's very interesting. If you ask, I, I guarantee you most people, most people my age, cannot tell you why. What it was. That what really it happened. was. Like, if you tell them, okay... What happened with uh, Jimmy Carter? He was impeached. Not Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Richard Nixon. Uh, wh what happened to Richard Nixon? He was impeached. Uh, why? Uh, Watergate. Because of Watergate. What was Watergate? Um, Some guys broke into a place. That's, about, that's what you'll and get. And you know how they know that? Forrest Gump. Yeah. That's how they know it. But see, I think there'd be a totally cool course if you learned history through through movies and popular culture because listen when i wrote it when do you remember the play that i wrote the musical i wrote for the school i wrote a musical and basically traced history from the time that the school building 67 was built and to the present and people were like really this stuff was all going on in the world by the way jimmy carter resigned uh I mean, richard nixon resigned, resigned. He, he wasn't, wasn't impeached. impeached it was that, it was coming yeah, I mean, that's another misconception that we have in history, yeah. how he was impeached. Well, what I love is that a lot of people think impeach means thrown out of office, and it doesn't. Yeah. Because there's been presidents that have been impeached, and not, and they continue to be president. Yeah. Impeach is, like is kind of like a censure. It's, it's fascinating to me. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and I'm wondering, you know, what are kids learning? Are kids learning about 9-11 now? Like, what do they learn about 9-11? I would well, love I, to I, know that. I would love to know, too, because, you know, people are so culturally sensitive, and it's going to, like, I don't want to bring up the term PC, but I will. Um, people are being so careful not to offend, you know, no one ever said, listen, we're going to talk about World War II, but we, we need to, you know, be gentle about how we refer to the Nazis, because, you know, 
there are people who, you know, <laughs> that, you know, they have their rights too. you know, people are being so sensitive. And I think they sh- don't get me wrong. I think you should be sensitive to Muslim culture. The thing that's difficult with history, the further and further we go along is this society that we are, we have so much information now that it used to be that people were either heroes or villains and they were nothing else. Yeah. And that's so rarely true. Heroes have agendas. Villains have agendas. Villains have good sides. Heroes have bad sides. And that's just the way it is. Yeah, but that's too difficult to understand. Right. So I I would just love to learn, know what they have learned about, you know, the early 2000s because it it really changed history. You know, it really changed everything at that point, because now we had a real we had something that we might have heard about in the past. Like this is like a real thing. And now what happened and how do we teach people about this? And I guarantee you, I mean, it means nothing. I mean, kids probably read it in a book and they just glaze over it. And it's it's this thing that happened. You know, it's 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 like what Pearl Harbor was to, you know, somebody in the nineteen eighties. Well, we're we live in a place where we have so much information and we want to share it all. Um explanations used to be more simplistic. You know, nothing is easy, including explanations. Nothing is easy. And we have not dealt with that. The fact that, okay, l- put it this way. To teach U.S. history, you know how long it takes? It doesn't take 180 school days. Yeah. Or you should be having like, you know, three sessions of history a day, you know, if you're going to do that. Because it takes an incredibly long time to express the details. Plus... The goal shouldn't be to do, to me, you shouldn't, well, they do U.S. history in two years, basically, you know, seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. You know, to me, it should be, it should be thematic. You should have a course in World War II. You should have a no, course. No, and it should be extended. I mean, you really should learn what it is. Yeah. But but we have, we have this skewed way of teaching history, we rewrite history as we teach it, well, and we erase the reality. Written. History, history is always history rewritten, is, but history is is how things happen as reported by the winners. I that's, had this discussion with somebody, and this guy is a bright guy, and this was at actually a press bright guy I've known him my whole life, mm-hmm. and we were talking about we got into the topic of war, and then we were talking about World War II, and he go and we were talking, and he's one of those like USA USA guys. He doesn't really know much about anything, but like mm-hmm. he's like America, you know, and he goes, well, if it wasn't for us, they'd all be speaking German in Europe. I'm like, but no, if it wasn't for the Russians, it would have happened. You know, the right. He's like, what do you mean the Russians? I'm like the Russians. He goes, the Russians were teamed up with them. I'm like, yeah, I love that. Let me let me teach you history. So I sat there and I'm telling him this, you know, the history of World War Two. And it's almost like he has never heard of any of this. Like, he has no clue what happened. Yeah, it isn't even like, oh, I thought when they said this, they meant that. No. They've not heard. No, 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 no. And he goes, and then we went into the concentration camps, and we, we saved, you know, we, we, we saved everybody. I'm like, we were fighting in the Pacific. I mean, yeah, we did have some impact on the way the war went, and we supplied weapons to Jer- uh, to the British, and if we they didn't get the weapons and we they didn't have our our navy to help them, it would have been a different scenario. But I mean, and then like you try to get into detail, and it's like, and he turns around, he's like, I honestly thought that we went into Europe, we went into Normandy because he knows the word Normandy. Yeah, and like, yeah, the we World won War Two started on D Day. Yeah, like that's what he thinks it is. He's like the saving, war started on saving on that Private day. Ryan. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. I didn't even think of that actually. Now, now it explains everything. Right. It's yeah. it's like people people define things by the the by the fictitious accounts you know of people that didn't. Exist you know anymore. what's a great great way to learn history and and I'm not saying this. The History Channel has some great series like mm-hmm. uh, World War Two in HD was yeah. a phenomenal series they had and it was like a one week presentation. Don't, don't those things to me. An hour of that thing is very informative. At the, at the end of an hour of, of that stuff, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm literally tired because my brain, I already know a bunch of stuff, and then I learn new stuff, and then I go, 
oh, then that means that stuff that I knew before, I have to think about it this way. It's not that it disproves it. It just makes me think about it in a new way. Yeah. And, you know, I watched the entire thing and one of my buddies, he watched it too. And this is when it aired live. And he goes, you know what I didn't get? I'm like, what? He goes, a lot of the video that they showed in Europe was like French. Like the French were recording it. Why not us? I'm like, because we weren't there. Yeah. We weren't there. We were there from, I know we did this Pacific and we went into Europe only in like 19, with realize the war went on for four years once we entered it. It had been going on yeah, like for, for, for two, yeah. two and a half years already in Europe. It had, it had been going on. You know, so a lot of the fighting... 1939, so we entered when? 40, 41. 41. D- d- For, the end of 41. The, the end of 41. 40, let's say 42. 42. Let's say 42. So we entered it, I mean, and then we were there for three years. Yeah. So the war was going on for a while. The, basically, half the war was being fought. Yeah. And then we entered it. Now, when you tell people, do you know who was considered part of the Axis, right? Yeah. Very interesting. What do people tell you? They'll tell you Germany... Mm-hmm. And maybe Japan. Okay. But people forget that Italy. People was, forget Italy. People forget Romania. Yeah. People forget Hungary, yeah. Bulgaria, and Thailand. Yeah. People forget that. And when you think Axis, people only remember us, the British. Allies, you mean. The allies. They think us, the British, the French. Right. And then, but then, 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 then eventually the Soviets don't, it, Italian uh, yeah. as well. Um, Italian as well. <laughs> uh, well, the Soviets can, don't, don't Canada, count. Canada, Australia. Yeah. Um, uh, geez, like half of Europe. You know, because all those yeah. small countries had armies too. You know, I don't know the five guys from Liechtenstein. You know, but <laughs> they were in on it too. Just very interesting. It's hey, very do you know you can rent Liechtenstein for a week? Really? You can. Re- How much? It's it's like not ridiculous. It's like one hundred forty thousand dollars. But to me, I think we should get like a bunch of people together and rent Liechtenstein for a week. It would be our country for a week. Why don't we do that? We should do that. Or not Liechtenstein, Luxembourg. Is it Luxembourg? I think it's Luxembourg. Ah, we forgot the French too. The French, remember, France, France was like split into half. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. So the French actually uh, count as both. Yeah. Allies and uh, the Axis. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, I love this stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, it's insane. Well, one I really get is I like finding out about wars that we never like. There was a war. The War of 1812, serious war. England declared war on us a second time. Nobody, nobody talks about it. No one talks about it. Nobody. I, I can't remember learning about it. Yeah. Like I know about it no. from reading, but like I don't, I don't remember learning about it. In the only thing I ever learned about is the Battle of New Orleans, which is, I think is hysterical yeah. because the one battle that you learn about was fought after victory was after um, England surrendered. The Ap- Anglo-American War. Yeah. It's very interesting. People people have no idea. Yeah. It, it's so, you know, American history is so s- small. Spanish American compared- War? <laughs> no, nobody nobody knows about that. But but it's very small. Like American history is tiny compared to other people's the because- rest of the world. So when when we say like, well, oh, no, who knows about the war, war of 1812? I'm like that's not too long ago. You're talking about 200 years ago. Yeah. And we don't know about it. Yeah, the detail that is known about the British monarchs 200 years ago is is just insanely deep. Yeah, yeah. It's all very interesting You know, stuff. there's no 1812 memorial this year. No one's, no one's celebrating. I'm telling you, when it's the 100th anniversary of World War II. Nobody's going to remember a thing. No, no, no. They'll be, they'll be because... You know was, why World, World War II will always be remembered? Because we constantly think about World War III. It, and it's become this sick thing where, you know, like... And this is how we've become as a society. Okay. You know, World War One happened, and then a couple years later, World War Two. Where's the third one? Yeah. It needs to be a trilogy. A trilogy. Yeah. It needs um, well, to you be know a trilogy. You know what's amazing? It's a trilogy Want to throw people? Tell people that it wasn't called World War One when it happened. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? <sighs> like, their head's like, what do you mean? Of course it was, because it was the first one, and then there was a the second one. Yeah. yeah, but people didn't know there was going to be a second one. They're like, what do you mean? Well, what the hell did they call it then? It was called the Great the Great War. War. They're like, that's stupid. You're like, no, no, honest to God. 
When did they coin it as World War One? When the Second War broke, and broke then they out. called it World. Why wouldn't they call it the Great War Two, the Second Great War? Well, the, it was called the Great War, but it was referred to as a World War. Yeah, because think about. Because of the, the fact that you just brought up that people forget that so many countries were involved, the mm-hmm. entire world was involved in it. Think about you know World War II. The theaters of of that war were World War II had theater, had had war theaters in Asia, Africa, yeah, the United States. Uh, excuse me, um, Asia, uh, Asia, Europe, Africa, and even. There were things that happened, and this is the other thing. When I was growing up, you heard that no one ever touched American soil, like no Germans ever touched. Yeah, Hamptons, something, something Hamptons, something in Jersey was blown up. You oh, know? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, no, I know that. I know they came. There were they boats got to the Hamptons. sunk off the side yeah. uh, on the East Coast. Yeah, there was um a they did um the japanese did bombs attached to balloons just let them float and let them land wherever they were going to that was one of the thing killed a fi- like killed a family in oregon i didn't know that yeah. is that real yeah really yeah i had no clue about that yeah i had no clue i know they got to the hamptons i mean i i, I know about that and i know yeah but they couldn't afford the properties yeah they couldn't afford they <laughs> like they turned back VZ, you know, you know, Hitler's like ancestors live on the island. Seriously? Yeah, Hitler's nieces and nephews, they all live on Long Island. They're from. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. They're from like. They changed their name. It's the Hilters. <laughs> no, they they the the I guess the brother or the uncle or like the cousin moved here. Stu, Stu Hitler, and, and they have like it's like Frank, like this, and they're like middle class. American guys it's so weird like there was a whole thing on this and like they found one of them they interviewed him and he's like he's like a body he owns like a body shop and he's like a regular guy and he has and it's like not what you imagine no mustache no (laughs) but I like can you imagine can you imagine like like Tony the mechanic with the mustache I love that you know we changed our names to protect the innocent this is Tony Hitler yeah I I want Mark Mussolini (laughs) I'm trying to find this. Uh, the three quiet brothers on Long Island. That's what it is. Uh, all three of them are relatives of Hitler. Long Island landscaper peeked out of his door and another visit a notebook. I press at the H. Oh, you have to send this map. to me. Ye- William Patrick Hitler, son of Alos Hitler Jr., who is Adolf Hitler's half brother. They shared the same father. Uh, he was born in Liverpool and then. He came to New York after the war. And his last name is actually Hitler? And he changed his name oh, and okay. moved uh, to Patchogue, Long Island. Hysterical. I'm looking at their house. So this is Hitler's grandnephew, kind of? Hit, no, his brother, his half-brother. And his son. I guess his, his, his uncle is Hitler. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? <laughs> uncle Aldoff. He was always very nice to me. Yeah, very interesting stuff. But uh, we got to wrap it up. I love this stuff, though, the history stuff. Oh, so do I. Because it's real. Yeah. Uh, go to our website, guys, from queens.com. You could also go to stream inside GFQ Live. TV Line. Any plugs? www.aidslifecycle.org. Come on. Put me over. I'm, I'm over the top. I'm past my goal. But I'd like to set my record. And I need like three. Uh, twelve hundred dollars left to beat my goal. Give a give a buck. Give five bucks. Nothing big. And if anyone wants to, um, I'm registered at Peak Bikes in in uh, Douglaston. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm registered for several lovely gifts if people want to give them to me. All right, guys. We'll see you all next week. Good night, everybody. Good night.